channel instead and click that link when you need a website. It's the same as the Boeing 767. Its length was also huge as well, coming in at a staggering 262 feet long, making it one of the longest planes around today. Needless to say, this aircraft would have dominated the airports around the world and required extensive modifications to the runways and gates, much like the A380 would 10 years later. But I'll get to that point in a minute. Let's talk about what it would have been like to fly on board. So, why was it never built? At the end of the study, Lockheed Martin admitted that it had neither the resources nor the know-how to build this plane. The design, incredibly noisy takeoff and landing, even with modern engines, the sheer size of the plane with its four engines would be like a rocket taking off, and you know this thing would guzzle fuel, making it incredibly expensive to run. The aircraft would also require all new gates to be built and new service vehicles to perform turnaround tasks. It would take a long time to board and find what a mess. Considerable air vortex that would delay planes landing or taking off behind it, reducing the number of airport slots and completely negate its original purpose for busy airports. So what was even the point in building it? As the design was so different from the standard aircraft, Lockheed Martin was not entirely sure how it would fly in the sky or how it would handle normal aircraft's day-to-day -day flight operations, requiring a ton more study, research, and wind tunnel tests. Alas, this proved all to be too much for the company that had only recently moved out of commercial aviation and the project was shelved. And in retrospect, Lockheed Martin might have been right to bail on this one. Airbus would go ahead to build the A380, and it would never really be that successful beyond initial orders. And when it was cancelled, the world of super large aircraft would come to a close. 